The opinions expressed in this video reflect the opinions of the participants only and do not reflect the opinions of the producer or Harvard Law School. Harvard Law School and or Harvard University in no way endorse this video. Established in 1817, Harvard Law School is the oldest continually operating law school in the United States. In addition to being the oldest, it is also one of the largest and most respected. The school typically has over 1,600 JD students enrolled and is generally ranked as one of the top three law schools in the country, along with Yale and Stanford. In fact, the U.S. News & World Report ranked Harvard as the number two school in the country, according to the 2010 law school rankings. The law school campus is located adjacent to the primary Harvard University campus in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Harvard Law has a distinguished history of producing leaders in the fields of politics, education, law, and business. HLS has produced two American presidents, Rutherford B. Hayes and sitting President Barack Hussein Obama, as well as a dozen governors, 14 Supreme Court justices, and Viacom chairman and controlling stakeholder Sumner Redstone, among others. Harvard's faculty includes such notables as lawyer, writer, and social critic Alan Dershowitz and Lenny Gounier, a top civil rights scholar and the first black woman to become a tenured professor at Harvard Law. Additionally, Harvard Law houses the world's largest law library. Let's meet some students. My name is Stuart Young. I went to Emory University in Atlanta and uh, I'm in my second year here. My name is Shelley Dealth. I went to Dartmouth undergrad and I'm a first year at Harvard Law School. My name is Arvin Abraham. Um, I'm a first year here at the law school and I went to undergrad at UCLA. My name is Kendra Thompson. I went to Hampton University for undergrad, which is in Virginia, and I'm a 1L. Alright, my name is Josh Davey. I went to uh, Northwest College for undergrad. It's a small school outside of Seattle in Washington State. Why did you choose Harvard Law? I chose to come to Harvard basically because it was the best school I got into. Uh, also because I wanted to live on the East Coast for a while. I'm interested in international law and uh, practicing American law abroad. So uh, I figured that Harvard University had the, uh, the kind of most stellar reputation around the world and that's why I chose Harvard over some of the other schools. I chose Harvard because most people don't have this sort of opportunity in their lives and it seemed so impractical to pass it up. Despite the financial like obstacles, it just seemed absurd to pass up this opportunity. It's like once in a lifetime. I guess I decided to come here because, um, I think primarily probably because it was the best law school I got into, but also because I really liked it when I came to visit. Um, I thought it was a great place. I really loved the environment. I um, thought the people that I met were really cool. Harvard Law has the highest average LSAT scores, bar passage rate, and starting salary of any law school. Why do you think that that's the case? Part of the reason the numbers are that way is because it is Harvard. The kind of people who apply here and the kind of people they let in tend to have high bar passage rates, tend to have high LSAT scores. You know, it's sort of a self-perpetuating cycle, really. You know, let in, you know, people with high scores, they go out past the bar in high rates and, and so on and so forth. No idea. I mean, I think we're a great school and we get a lot of good students, so I think that could be, you know, probably why. Probably, like, the reputation tends to attract a lot of, like, very capable, bright, bright kids. Really, I mean, the top three are Harvard, Stanford, and Yale. Um, Yale, I mean, this is anecdotal, but they have the reputation of being, um, they're so smart that they're almost a little bit out of touch, as in they're, you know, they're so kind of into these ethereal uh, theories of law that when they get to a regular test like the bar, not to mention that uh, they don't have grades, so they really haven't been, uh, you know, I guess maybe properly grilled. Um, the theory is that they're, they're so out there they can't take the basic test. That, that's just anecdotal. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, and again, I would probably say over Stanford, um, it, again, it just might be that Harvard reputation, that Harvard name is just, uh, can't be beat. Harvard is a difficult school to get into. How did you get in? Uh, how did I get in? I'm, I'm not sure. I think, I think I had good scores, you know, both in terms of grades and LSATs. I think my uh, personal statement probably helped a little bit, um, but I think it's largely a numbers game. My LSAT score and probably my work experience, um, but that being said, a third of the students here come out of, straight out of undergrad, so it's not necessary. I actually went into undergrad knowing that I wanted to go to law school, and I went with the intent of going to a top 10 law school. I knew that if I didn't get into a top 10 ranking law school, then I wasn't gonna go to law school. What drew you to law? Why do you want to be a lawyer? 
I want to do policy work and government work, uh, so I think it's a really good foundation to have for that. Well, my interest in the law really comes from my interest in uh, religious liberties. I, got, uh, I was involved in a case that was actually decided by the United States Supreme Court a few years ago, um, and it had to do, having to do with religious liberties, and, and seeing my attorneys handling those issues really inspired me and got me interested in going to law school, so that's kind of my own you know, story. Well, I think, like, at least initially what I want to do is practice corporate law. Um, I enjoy transactional work, and I think that, you know, it would be, I find it a lot of fun. A lot of people think that's, you know, kind of like a more boring field of law to get into, but um, I've actually, from my experiences and what I've, like, heard about being a corporate lawyer, um, I think I'd really enjoy it. I mean, I've contemplated maybe getting into politics. Um, I've thought about some sort of public service, so I think all of that stuff I'm still kind of just like toying around with. Um, but I think that with a law degree from Harvard, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, and I have a lot of flexibility with like transitioning from one area to another and whatnot. Well, anytime like an American business, if they want to do business, you know, in America or they want to expand into America, they have to comply with American laws. Usually when they or when they merge, you know, with American companies. Um, so that, that creates kind of a whole set of issues that need to be worked through. Uh, so you, that requires American lawyers or people familiar with the American system of kind of tax, corporate governance, uh, antitrust, things like that. I knew that I wanted to come to law school, but I don't know why I want to be an attorney. So I don't know, kind of incongruous, I guess I'll figure it out eventually. But I do know that I'll probably do um, a corporate firm for a couple years until I really find my niche, pay off some loans in the meantime. HLS has a reputation for being somewhat competitive and socially tough. Would you say that reputation is fair? I definitely do find myself having to work pretty hard, but um, it's not been like an unmanageable amount of work. I haven't found my classmates to be like cutthroat or anything like that. So, you know, it's been like the best possible experience that I could ask for. I have not really found that to be the case. I think that those, that reputation was earned in a different time, and the law school today is a lot, uh, it's a kinder, gentler place, as they say. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty competitive for the top couple spots, you know, for honors like law review, uh, for the top few grades in each course, but beyond that, uh, I don't think there's a lot of competition between students. You know, everyone does fairly well, everybody gets good jobs, so there's not really a need to. I would say, I mean, after I've just rubbished uh, Yale's kind of grading system, I would think there is disproportionate kind of focus on the grades, particularly your first year grades, which again, you can't choose your professor, you can't choose your courses, you can't choose the time of those courses. Um, so you just kind of get stuck. So uh, to some extent, some professors, if they're really rough and you just get stuck with them, you might, you know, be working twice as hard as, you know, uh, a counterpart in another section. Um, and then you get the grade that you get. And it's, you know, everyone's evaluated just by kind of looking at this one particular letter on your transcript. Um, and yet, I don't think that uh, kind of explains the full picture. Um, not to mention, you know, after your first job, your grades don't really matter anymore. So, of course, I say that going as I'm going through the uh, fall recruiting process, that there's a strong, strong uh, emphasis on grades, and I don't like that as much. I actually haven't experienced that here, but I think part of the reason, though, and what most people will tell you is that it's in a large part due to Dean Kagan, who's made a lot of changes in trying to make it a more comfortable and happy place to be. So I know there's a lot more social events, like, she put an ice skating rink out um, during the winter time. We have free coffee, just little small things. Um, and I know it's the climate and the culture of the law school has changed, not only for the students, but also for the faculty as well. Like, people have come here before and been happy with the education and not with the social aspect and a lot of like competition and competition in a negative way. Whereas I think now more people are more intrinsically motivated and don't have to do well at their classmates' expense. Are there many school-sponsored social events? There's always like free food stuff going on with some student organization that's trying to lure you, but they also do a lot of like bar events in the evenings and stuff where people just get together and go out informally. I would say I go out on average like two to three nights a week, and I wouldn't say that's atypical for a law student. I think that most law students here tend to go out a good amount. Um, if you want to like be stressed out and like study all the time, you can, but I think like in general, it's pretty it's doable to have a balance between like working and like, you know, like having some fun on the side. Actually, there was a huge event last night, and it was at Gypsy Bar, which is in Boston, which is an amazing bar, and it was huge. And so there's usually like at least one thing each each week, like at a bar or like wine and cheese or things like that. How do you like the Boston area? I, I was living in London before I came here. That's one reason I'm interested in international law. So. 
uh, coming from a huge kind of city of, you know, metropolitan, like seven million people, coming to a relatively smaller kind of, uh, you know, Boston. Uh, I'll leave it at that. It just, it, no, I mean, it, it couldn't compare. Is it distracting to go to school in Cambridge? There's enough to do to keep you satisfied, but not so much where you're like, class, who needs class? Part of the problem is, since a lot of stuff is so close, just to take New York City for example, I've got friends there, um, you find that since it really isn't that far away, you think, well I can just do that anytime I want to, but since you, it's never so far that you actually plan it, or you book a ticket, or, or you really make firm plans to do that, you never kind of end up getting around to doing it. So I, I have always been intending to go to New York, New York for the past year, yet I've never ever gotten around to it. So maybe that's just me, but I just find that uh, the workload is such that it's, you know, you think twice before taking a weekend out of the city um, or far away from your studies. Harvard is one of the largest law schools in the country. How would you say this affects the life of the school? We're divided up into sections which are about like 80 students each and so you end up like having all your classes with the people in your section so it's pretty easy to form bonds through that um, and you end up meeting a lot of people outside of class also, um, very social events and whatnot. I found that the school is surprisingly quite social um, and you know it's really not a problem to meet people even though the school is so large. Um, so despite all that um, I've been having a great time and I found it fairly easy to make friends and whatnot. Mm, no, so we're split up in the sections of 80 people. So you spend all your time with those 80 people. So that makes a very kind of small community within a larger community. If you have a particular interest, there's someone here that shares that interest. No, how to, no matter like how remote or obscure or unheard of your interest is, someone has it too. And so I don't think that it's difficult to connect. I think you really find all kinds, and I think Harvard, that's one of the things they do pretty well is, is try to get a diverse class. I think that, uh, you know, a little more ideological diversity would be nice, especially in, in terms of the faculty. I mean, it's really very one-sided in terms of political and social views and being, being quite, you know, liberal. Um, there's a couple, you know, more conservative voices, but overall it's, it's pretty unbalanced. Uh, in that perspective. I think the student body is a little more reflective of the population as a whole. Well they divide us up into sections so it's such that your first year is you're hanging out with basically 80 other people all year and you have all your classes with them all the time. Um, so that's pretty, that's a, a bonding experience so to say, not to mention the first year courses are more grueling, they're more Socratic, so uh, you know they say the first year of law school the professors scare you to death. So. Uh, I wouldn't say I really had a problem um, connecting or, or getting along with anyone in my section. Have you been called on? Oh, of course, the very first day. <laughs> I actually was. I actually was. Once you get past that initial hurdle, they're not as bad anymore. Was it frightening to be called on your first time? Oh my god, it was so frightening. Actually, on the way to class, I felt the first, very first day, I felt as nervous as I did for the LSATs. So like my heart was racing, I felt nauseated, and then as soon as I got called and I was like, that wasn't so bad. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not that admissions mistake, so. I think like some professors may be more confrontational. Um, mine have been very, very relaxed. Um, and I guess I might have lucked out in terms of like professor uh, selection and whatnot. Like I ended up in a section that's like very, uh, very chill in terms of like professors. First of all, it depends on the professor, because some professors will let you pass, you know, if you don't know the answer. Um, and then others get right up in your face. My first class, first semester, I had a professor who was very much in your face and you couldn't pass. So that was very nerve-wracking the first few weeks and then after a while you just get used to it. You must be academically inclined by virtue of being a student here. Does this make for a one-dimensional student body? I've really been surprised by how nice people were and how real they were. You know what I mean? Like there's this real sense of them being an actual multifaceted person and not just an act, someone who's completely into academics and that's all. It's well-rounded. I think the reasons that people come here to study law are pretty diverse. It's not just that everybody wants to go become a lawyer. People are interested in, I think, applying legal education to a variety of things. If you weren't here, what would you be doing? If I weren't here, I probably would have taken like an analyst position um, at an investment bank or consulting firm, something like that. Maybe a master's in public policy program. What can you find at HLS that you can't find elsewhere? I think you have way more resources here than like anywhere else in the country. Um, like any other law school you go to pales in comparison to this one. Um, and I think partially because it's such a large school, 
um, you know, you have more resources in and of itself because like you have so many students and so many professors and whatnot. But then also you have the resources of the Harvard name and you know having like such a great university to rely on. I think that those are unparalleled. The professors are incredible. I have absolutely amazing professors um, who are legendary. We had uh, Justices um, Scalia and Breyer here on Wednesday. That's a pretty <laughs> great resource to have. Um, I think also just having so many other graduate schools at Harvard and in the Boston area makes it a nice, greater kind of intellectual environment to be in as a student. What has surprised you most about your experience here so far? That it is possible to go out and have a good time and like still, you know, get your work done. And the people here are much more laid back than the reputation seems to, seems to put forward. I suppose you wouldn't know, you know, what the classes are really like. I mean, there are a lot of professors who are very good and who are very engaging, but there's a lot who aren't that great. Uh, and the classes are, you know, kind of dull. You don't really learn a lot that's uh, useful in terms of everyday practical kind of lawyering. Uh, you, you just talk about a lot of theory. You, I guess you learn to think like a lawyer, but you're left to learn the, the rules basically on your own. A pleasant surprise was that the disproportionate access to important people. Uh, for instance, like I said, I, I'm interested in international law. Uh, just in the first few weeks, we've had one uh, European commissioner uh, and one kind of European director general come here to speak. We just had, you know, two Supreme Court justices be on a panel, you know, so obviously in most schools they would be the whole show, but we had two of them together on a panel with uh, two British lords who are on this, uh, the kind of highest court over there. So it was four of these guys in one panel, and that was, it was a big deal, and yet it wasn't, um, it wasn't earth shattering for most people because these Supreme Court justices are here all the time. So it's just actually, it's amazing just kind of all the, you know, important uh, international leaders you meet. And after a while, I mean, I, I hate to sound snobby, but you kind of get used to it. You just kind of get used to like, oh, you know, this senator speaking today, or oh, this, you know, commissioner from another country, or oh, this uh, Supreme Court justice. What has surprised me most has actually been my classmates. The fact that so many people are actually so down to earth and just normal. Eh? There's like this perception about Harvard that it's these really affluent, like East Coast, I'm too good for everyone attitudes. And, and it's not that at all. What do you plan on doing after graduation? Uh, what I plan to do at this point is go into litigation. I'll probably go to work for a law firm for at least a few years, see where that takes me. Uh, and then I'm not sure about the long run. Do you need a car to go to school here? Uh, no, no. Um, I was actually uh, told not to bring a car because it's pretty like, it's pretty cumbersome to have one around here. It's tough to find parking. Um, and in the winter, like, it'll usually be snowed in and, you know, it's just a hassle to deal with. No, I have one, but you don't need it. I have one, so it's, it makes things convenient, especially if you're buying something like, you know, a microwave or a fridge or something big. Um, but that being said, uh, moving in and out is a huge pain if you don't have a car. Some people do it, but day to day you don't need a car. No, not at all. The public transportation is phenomenal in the Boston area. There's a team, which is the subway system, then there's also buses, and then everything's just really close. How much do you study outside of class? Probably like three to four hours a day, four hours a day, and then more stuff on the weekends, kind of catching up. I think it varies, but probably on average, somewhere between like 20 and 30 hours a week. I would say I spent a minimum of four hours every night reading. That's minimum. Um, sometimes up to seven or eight, depending. I just do too much, really. <laughs> like, Are clubs a big part of student life here? There's so many. <laughs> there's crazy. It's really nice, like, if you're a minority, then there's, like, different ethnic groups ones. But if you have, like, a particular interest, if you're really into human rights, there's a human rights organization. If you're into law and business, they have that. If you pretty much they have actually a target shooting club, which I was really surprised to. I wouldn't expect to find that here. So almost like anything you can imagine being interested in, you'll probably find it. Can you study in other parts of the university? I personally don't because the problem with that is they're all on different schedules. So Harvard already, already as the law school is really late uh, and the Kennedy School is even later. So, you know, whatever you take at another school, that's going to affect your schedule and whether or not, you know, in the in the fall, it affects kind of when you can come back uh, and start classes. In the spring, it affects when you can go off to start your, you know, your summer work experience. So I personally don't plan to do any of that. I've actually thought about taking some classes at MIT, 
um, and maybe some classes in the business school. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility in that regards too. Um, so yeah, most likely, like not my first year though, but maybe next year or the year after. Yep, there's a dual enrollment. Um, I actually would like to take a class at the business school while I'm here. What kind of person might not be happy at HLS? Maybe somebody who wants their hand held a little bit more, who would benefit, I guess, from being in a smaller community and who might not be able to kind of take the initiative so much themselves to make things happen, but needs a little more structure or maybe just like less upper. I think it's easy to get lost in like all the different things that you could be doing and what should you really be focused on. Whew. Um, I mean, I hate to say it, but the, the school is so, that's one of the things about Harvard being one of the largest law schools in the country, is that it's so big, there is something for, for everyone. And professors are right when they say this is the New York of uh, all universities because again everyone's here so if you're interested in you know Supreme Court justices they're coming here if you're interested in international law we've got those kind of politicians coming here if you're interested uh, you know in local politics you can do that um, the only kind of I guess thing that if you're very 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 keen on uh, American politics and that you're you kind of want to be in the center of that then obviously Georgetown is the place to be because just by virtue of being in DC they have obviously Again, uh, huge access to politicians. Um, that being said, you know, um, Clinton went to Yale uh, and Bush went to Harvard, so. Perhaps if you're intimidated by being in large classes, because our classes um, are broken up into sections the first year of 80 people, so if that's intimidating for you and you want a maybe stronger connection with your professors, then Harvard may not be the place for you. Don't come here if you can't be challenged, I guess, if, you, if you're not willing to rethink some of, the, some of the positions you may have held all your life, because you will be challenged. Um, and don't come here if you want to go to a school where you're going to learn all the black letter rules in class. What advice do you have for prospective students looking at law schools in general, and Harvard in particular? Apply early, apply to a bunch of different places, um, do well on the LSATs. I mean, I would say like, you know, the generic advice does hold true, like do well in your classes, get good grades, um, definitely try very hard on the LSAT because um, I think that's pretty much essential, like everyone here um, pretty much has like a good LSAT score. Um, and I think beyond that, I mean, you know, try and have fun in undergrad, don't, don't like stress too much, like not getting into a school like Harvard is not the end of the world, there's plenty of good law schools out there. In general, I mean, think about why you want to go into law. Think about what you want to do with your career. I mean, those are useful things personally as well as, you know, the kind of things you want to put in your personal statement. Um, I would say study hard for the LSAT. Don't, don't uh, you know, take your chances. It's not worth retaking. Um, you want to do well the first time. Obviously, get good grades. Uh, and, um, but beyond that, you know, there's lots of good schools and lots of people from all kinds of schools get good jobs, you know. Take it very seriously. Um, take your LSAT seriously, the actual application. Use it as a way to present another side of yourself in addition to your academics. And then if you can, talk to actual current students and see their likes and dislikes about the school and the community. What I chose to do was I got advice from people who are currently at Harvard. So there was someone from my college who I knew was already um, coming here. So he was able to kind of help me uh, kind of show me what the professors are looking for in the application processes. So I would definitely say talk to as many people uh, who are currently at Harvard uh, and try to get them to help you with your application.